Hello everybody, welcome to the show. I'm SM Sith Lord and this is the weekly build stream right here on the uh, Somnium Space Streaming channels that you are tuned in on. Hello everybody, um, I'm coming at you from sunny California here and I am making a, um, let me adjust my camera a little bit, I am making, I'm going to be 3D modeling something in 3DS Max and baking all the lighting into it and exporting it out and into a Somnium Space web world. It is going to end up looking very similar to the stuff that we're looking at right now. I'm actually in this project where I was doing some tests the other day about um, the best ways to bake things out. And uh, this way worked out pretty well right here. So this is all um, baked. There's no lights except for a directional light in this scene. And the directional light's only lighting the avatar and also the um, the shininess. You see how there's this cool shininess on things? That's reflecting the light source. Um, so I might change the light source out to be a, uh, an HDRI or a, a cube map reflection probe type thing. Um, but the whole baking process is gonna be very similar to this. However, the teapot, and the Taurus knot, um, they might be going or they might be staying because they are pretty impressive. Um, but I'm going to be making a small art gallery baked. A small baked art gallery is going to be my goal for today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and remove these other tests that I was doing. And I'm going to launch with the profiler to show why baking is important. So if you're targeting like a desktop computer or something, you don't need to worry about baking or draw calls very much at all, really. But if you're targeting mobile devices like um, phones or um, Quest, Quest 2s while they're in mobile mode, not plugged into a computer, then you have to make your things hyper-optimized, super-optimized. Um, and one, a couple ways to do that, the main way for the mobile devices is to make sure your draw calls are low. You wanna have really, really low draw calls. So when I um, debug my draw calls here and I um, go one at a time, you see that the entire scene rendered in one draw call. That's without the avatars and stuff, but the scene is the thing that you have control of if you're making a scene. And you can see that the, the lighting, the reflections, all of that was all in a single draw call. And then the player. And then the player has a couple different parts, but the player is going to be different when I actually get this into the, the Somnium web world. But all right there, that one draw call going from absolutely nothing to the entire scene, that's going to be hyper-optimized. That's going to run well on a mobile device. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the best, it's going to run really well. Um, as as much as you have control over. Now, if somebody's running on a Nokia from the 90s somehow, and they've somehow got like a web browser on there, it's still gonna have problems for them. But um, you can't get better than one draw call, usually, generally. Okay, so, um, let's get to 3D modeling. I'm gonna be in 3DS Max for the most of the rest of the stream here. Here's that scene. Here's what it looks like rendered from 3DS Max. And you see that rendered from 3DS Max actually doesn't even look as good as inside of the game right here, inside of the engine. So um, yeah, I'm gonna make something new, newish in here, art gallery thing. I'm gonna be use lots and lots of curves because I saw that the curves here look really good with the reflections on them and the god's fifth primitive the teapot it looks good with uh, the reflections on it so um i'm gonna keep the curves i uh, haven't consulted any like ai concept generating crap or um excuse me <laughs> stuff or any concept art at all so i'm kind of just gonna freeform this and um just see what i end up with and i'm just gonna be trying to doing curvy things interesting lighting this whitewashed look and then at the end, I'll be porting it, uh, exporting it as a GLB, dropping it into the Play Canvas editor here, and then um, checking it out. So let's do it. I, I really don't know what I'm going to make. Okay. So 
We got some good stuff going on here, but we need something that's more coherent. So let's hide a couple things for now. Oh, this is already merged, huh? Why is that already merged? I just need to take it out from here. We're all good. All right, so let's get rid of some of this stuff. Get rid of the teapot. Getting rid of the Taurus for now because I'm going to be trying to make some pillars. Let's get some pillars in here. I'm just thinking. Okay, so the impressive stuff is the curvy stuff. So what if there's some kind of vortex things involved with these pillars? Let me turn off the profile. The profiler is good to see how many draw calls you have or look at the other stats in that panel down there for uh, what else might be causing performance hangups on the senior building. But as long as I go with this approach, pretty confident that I'm not going to have any performance issues to worry about. I want a vortex that sinks into the ground. Yeah, I'm gonna make this happen. So we're gonna um, we're gonna get busy over here. I guess I'm gonna do a, a leg. So I'm gonna create a line in the side view here, and this line is going to be a kind of a vortex. Stay in frame here. <laughs> I think I need to move my chair. There we go. That's better.
Okay, so let's delete that vertice. And do I want this vertice? I think that I do. No, let's delete that vertice too. No, let's not. Let's keep that. Okay, now let's make this shape a little bit more like I want. Go with that. Okay, let's see how this looks. And then I'll make this a... What is it, a modifier? A lathe, yeah. How does that look? Pretty good. Whoops. Not nearly tall enough. Okay, let's add a little bit down here too, though. Okay, I waste a lot of geometry down here at the bottom. Can my interpolation be adaptive? It can, but then it gets kind of nuts. How, how come I can't control the adaptiveness of the interpolation? I just got too much geometry down there, so how can I get rid of some of that geometry um, let's see these two things got to be merged that's probably good there, I think that's good. How's that look? That's 
pretty good. Okay, now I just need to cut holes for this and I'll have a pillar and hopefully the pillar looks pretty cool. Um, I could test how cool the pillar will look. Let's just, I guess, uh, detach this for a minute. I'll do that. Here, I'll just move the whole thing up for a moment. There we go. I'll use my imagination. Not so much. Let's press render. Cool. Look how smooth it kind of looks. Um, it could look smoother. In fact, we're, we're going to make it look smoother in a moment. Now, if the ground level is over there, we you got the pillar going into the bowl and there's curves everywhere. And this is what I wanted. So this looks good. And the bottom might be a little bit too big. So let's adjust that. This. Let's make this not even there. There we go. And then this is closer to here. Okay, let's see how that looks. I think that's a little better. Um, and then I want to be emitting light probably from down there. So let's change this to have some lights in it. Get rid of some of these other lights. Just brighten them. Okay, let's see 
this light get emitted? I don't see the light getting emitted there. It's not good. What is happening there? Is that what I wanted to happen? Oh, okay. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, maybe not. No. Okay, that's more like what I wanted to happen. This ain't quite cutting it. I'm gonna to try to go the simplistic route. Let's just drop an Arnold light. A light bulb. In here. Okay, I think that might look good in this room. So let's um, let's do some of that, and then I, I might have my pillar just about done. Um, I have one texture here to apply to this thing. There we go. That's going to impact the looks of it. Okay, <clears throat> now I need to cut this into the floor and start working on the top. All right, so how am I going to cut this into the floor? That's actually a pretty good question. And it's the question that drives us, Neil. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna detach this thing real quick. Detach, detach, detach. there and here I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna do something to this 
I am. But first, I'm gonna go and do this over here. Let's give this thing a little plane. And this will be the part that I actually merge in with an adjacent geometry. Um, and this thing. gonna do this How did this thing get confused by that? What is wrong with you, bro? Maybe I, I need to merge vertices or something. What is so confusing here? It looks like it's not confused. How did that happen? All I wanted to do is make a simple shape. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to make this shape. I don't care what this thing has to say. Okay, and then select everything, not that, delete everything, and now we're going to create some stuff here like this.
How about that? All right. I'll take out that thing, and then I can find the broken one and delete it, and I have my good one right here. Perfect. Now I just have to um, attach things to this cube, this square, instead of that uh, weird uh, circle thing. Cool, and it's low poly, good, okay, whatever. Let's assign that to it and see how it looks. Beautiful, now we have a, a, a tile that has a whole board in it, has our, our, I don't know, pillar planter in there. We're ready to start lining these things up at instances and doing cool stuff with them. Okay, so for right now, I'm just gonna hide this and then let's raise everything else back up. Okay, um, the curved stuff, the bake lighting, that's awesome. But I can't forget that also, there's probably going to be an amazing skybox in this thing. So, um, windows and uh, holes in the ceiling might be a good idea too. Keep it simple, that's the key. Let's keep it simple. Let's not get too extravagant with the top. So I'm looking at the top and thinking, um, what more do I need to do up there? Uh, I probably need to make that little tile thing, flip it upside down, move it up there, no problem. The other thing that I need to do is add some lighting up there perhaps, or perhaps not. I'll just let the ambient light in the room take care of that, sure. But this thing, I do want up there, so I could patch it in to the rest of the geometry that would be up there. I do need to start thinking of uh, ceiling lights. Am I gonna have some kind of ceiling lights? I just may. Okay, let's also detach the ceiling here because that's going to be patched in together. Okay, that's looking good. Let's get the first room to start coming together here. Um, I'm gonna delete some of these other lights. I guess they're fine. But this one, with its buddies there, and its top and bottom thing there, um, actually,
they look up next to each other. They are looking okay. All right, so let's continue down this path here. And then, want a similar thing over here. Uh-oh, I did something wrong. I think my camera is just too close to the wall. Okay, this is looking pretty good. I think the scene that I'm making is going to be a door. <laughs> this is going to be maybe the first room of a larger scene, but we're going to have pillars. We're going to have a walkway. It'll be like the spawn point and you'll walk forward, maybe up some stairs to a, a hole in the wall. In other words, a door. And then on the other side, perhaps this will be like an iterative, iterative thing that I, I add more to next time. I think we're looking good here. I think I'm, got, I'm getting the space mapped out in my mind here. Let's put no windows in this one. Yeah, let's put no windows in this one. So I think the next thing I need to, to uh, define here is the door. I need to put the door in here. Let's do that. Let's save this because this is turning out well and it's going to bake well. Um, it, it's a little bit abstract right now, but I know that it's going to come together because the test that I did the other day, it's going to look like this. It's going to be awesome. So, to it. The door. How do doors look in this world of curved stuff? The doors have lights on them. The doors. Ooh, ooh, okay. The doors are cool. They're like this. I saw it in my mind. Uh, here it is. First of all, I need to make a capsule so I know how big my hero is. My hero is hero height, which is in Imperial. Not 10 foot, but 6'2. He's about yay big. Okay. That's how big a dude is. Gordon Freeman, specifically and me so he's over here um why is everything so high i don't want it all to be high man how could i possibly lower everything down to where i want it to be um, all right I, I won't mess with it we're good at this height um, there's a person. Let's make the door. The door is going to be this shape. How am I going to make this shape? Let me think this through. Ah, yes. Let's start with a rectangle. It's always a good thing to start with. And the door will be about like this. Nice and wide, right? But that will be the inside of the door. Convert this to a spline. Delete the bottom segment. Let's grab these corners here. Turn those into smooth. Oh man. Now we're getting somewhere. Sure, that could be a door. 
So then I go to the spline and I say that I want to outline this. Yay, big. Okay. I'm going to go to the vertice and I make sure that my vertice is perfectly aligned here. This one. Um, where is it at? Right here. Smooth. Okay. And then I select the edge and I say that I want this to be aligned and that flattens the bottom out. And I have this weird horseshoe shape going on. And is that my door? Yeah, I think that it is. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I had a door that was inside of this thing, what would that look like? Well, let's clone this. Edit clone. Okay. And let's undo that outline that I did by deleting all these. And then let's add a vertice. I want to add it right in the center. I'll do my best. There. Making a door right now. We'll make this a line. We'll make this a line. All right, so that could be a door, I suppose, eventually. Okay, so let's get this door jam going. I'm gonna make a backup copy of this. And this door jam is gonna be an extra, we'll do a bevel. Sure, that can be it. Okay, and then we're gonna collapse all into a poly and remove the back end and the bottoms. Well, I, I probably don't need, but I feel like I might just keep them there in case I do need them. Yeah, I'll remove those later if I don't need them. Okay, we got a door jam. Let's apply this texture to the door jam. Okay, now with some cool lighting, that door jam might be cool, but hey, we don't have a door, so let's make this one a door. We're gonna do a bevel. Oh, cool. It tried to bevel it kind of the same, so I'll just do it almost the same, except for tone down the height on everything.
that looks pretty good. Um, but a door would have this on both sides, right? So let's take off that double. We'll go with that. And then we'll collapse all into a poly. Um, we'll delete that surface. We'll grab this surface and grow the selection. Then I'm going to detach, but I'm going to detach as a clone there. And then my purpose is to then select a clone. Here, mirror it on the X axis. And then attach it over here. And then select all the vertices and weld the vertices together. Like so. Um, and let's do the smoothing groups. Do the smoothing groups on here also. with the flat face on the front. All right, over here we'll sign that, but we're not done yet. What is a door without doorknobs? Okay, and for the sake of keeping it simple, we'll call it at the doorknobs. We're doing pretty good on time, by the way, about 50 minutes in. Um, let's optimize this thing a little bit, so I'll convert this to a poly, and then I'll delete that part, and then I'll attach the ball to it. All for the sake of, I'll just set my pivot point to the center of this thing on the x-axis. so that I can clone it and it will be perfectly lined up on the other side of the door. Cool. Now we can take this thing and attach that and that to it. Um, I kind of want to make hinges, but I'm not going to get that into it. Let's not get that into it. All right, there. Now we got a cool door. Cool, let's move its hinge though. Not the kind of hinge, not a 3D modeled hinge, but um, the pivot point hinge. Let's move it over. So this is a weird door. I don't think this door would work in real life. So where would its hinge be? Well, my best bet would be something over here. How's that? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 
uh, if the doors open too much, it's not so good. But if they open this much, it's good. Okay. Well, that's not so good. Can we make it better? Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, I got a door. The door is going to be against the wall over here somewhere. Okay. Now, let's make it more interesting. Let's open this door a little bit like so. And let's put a light behind it. pinkish color Seems good. Might be able to just put a, a regular light back there, not a plane. That would probably work out. Let's try a plane again. Okay, hopefully that works out better in the end. Um, it is way too bright though, actually. How about that? How's that gonna look? That's getting better. I think that's what we're going with there for the door. Okay, uh, let's move things quickly along here and let's get some uh, stairs in front of the door here. Okay, we'll do that with a cylinder. Um, do I want stairs? Let me think about this. Hmm. 
don't think stairs is keeping it very simple, and I'm trying to keep it simple, so let's not do stairs yet. Let's look at something else instead. How about adding some lighting to the ceiling? Yeah, and let's not have a missed opportunity in the ceiling for some interesting lights. So how are we going to pull that off? Well, this can be up higher. And what if these didn't have that thing on it? So we'll go group, one group. What if this thing didn't exist? And what if instead there was a light? Kind of like that up here. Um, it should probably be directional though, so let's make it go up. Not very good, but maybe it could look good. If this was just slightly higher, I would have. It's getting somewhere. Let's see if we can get it all the way there, though. You. Let's make you bigger. That's borderline too bright, too. That seems right by itself, but if the other ones were doing that, too, maybe it wouldn't be all right. Almost looking good.
Okay, I think this this is good. So I'll have a roof, then I'll have those things on it. Yeah. Now what? Um, now, I'll tell you what. Let's um, adjust this room to be the correct dimensions then. Since I'm probably going to keep this room, it looks like. It's not quite centered, but whatever. We'll mostly center it. Okay, now let's get the lights over to these other ones to see how it looks there. Okay, it looks pretty good. What is that black strip on the right about? Oh, that's because my ceiling's not welded into the rest. All right. So am I ready to just weld everything in? How am I doing on time here? Okay, so I think that I should start welding everything in, doing the unwrap and compiling out or uh, baking out this particular room. So I need to um, start thinking about, uh, okay, I think the ceiling's fine. Keep it simple. The floor, Maybe the floor is fine too. So I'm going to keep it really simple and just do this room. Let's do it. Um, okay. Now, how can I center these things? I want the door to be perfectly centered. Is it? It is. The door is perfectly centered. Wonderful. But none of the other stuff is centered. What is the other stuff? What is this? And I want to assign this to the door, but only on the... Y axis. Now that's centered. All right. And then I'm going to take this and I center it over there. This is on the Y axis. So that's centered too. Cool. Now the other stuff needs to be centered and that'll be a little bit more complex. To do that, I should hide these two things.
ride on, ride on, ride. Okay, so let's get this perfectly aligned with the thing below it. It already is. I don't even know how that's possible. I thought that I was resizing the thing beneath it. But somehow, I'm perfectly aligned there already. Cool. I don't need to cut any holes in the top after all because it's just going to be sitting there receiving light. So I can merge it back in. And I am going to merge it back in because I'm keeping things simple. So let's attach that back in. Then we'll select all the vertices and weld them together if they're close enough. Next up, the floor. Now the floor is a different story. It does have to be welded in. So I'm actually going to detach that thing that I just welded in. But I'm going to detach it as a clone. Oh, no, actually I don't need to do that. I already have it down here. Okay, so now let's just align this. So, and like so, okay. Um, but I have to cut it up some, and I have to cut up this wall over here too. Maybe, perhaps, actually, no. Let's not cut it up. Let's do this to the wall instead. We're going to make a box like that. And it's going to go up all the way. to there now we're good it goes a little bit too far back so let's squash it in oh now I'm gonna have to move it again ah, that's okay there and we'll assign the white texture to it it's too tall let's bring that down we're almost there we're gonna center this thing oops that convert it to a poly let's do some optimizations on it we're going to remove the back because we don't need the back then we're going to grab these two edges here and here and apply a chamfer to them to give them a round look more there we go that looks good um, our height is all wrong i see is it no, our height is not all wrong. It's just how it looks. Looks can be deceiving. Okay, I think that's it. We're ready to rock and roll there. I bet. So, um, let's test it. We'll test the render there. Oh, uh, my light looks like it's being blocked. We gotta unblock my light. It must be sunken inside of this thing. So let's unsink it. I bet you that's enough. Oh wait, no, I bet you that's not enough. I was basing it on the door last time. I don't want to base it on the door. I want to base it on this thing, but forward a little bit more, and that's enough. I'm sure of it, kinda. Now I'm sure of it. Okay, looks good. I need to cut the holes in the ground again, uh, but I'm planning on doing that. Uh, I do need to move them along let's move it along very rapidly here i'm not going to do any more customizations to the ground we're good everything is good just going to cut the holes attach them and we're good so um this let's go ahead and cut it with a slice plane slice plane slice plane yeah and i'll cut it um, rotate this 90 Snap it to where I need to cut. There. And there. And 
Okay, but then I also need to cut this plane and this plane along this slice plane. Rotate it 90 degrees. There. And there. And there. Can't forget there. There. And there. Okay, now I can do this fantastic stuff. Bango! And now I can do the test render and I have the decision to make of do I want to weld the, that um, piece of floor I just made with the actual pillars. Now I don't think that I need to weld them at all. I don't think that I need to. I think that this room is nearing completion. Hopefully the first room of many in connected rooms of a, an environment of some sort. But you gotta take it one step at a time and I wanna take it in extremely colorful looking cool baked lighting steps so here we go oh, i, I kind of want to add a little more detail so let's see what i can do in the time remaining if i add more detail i might not get it all the way in i'm gonna have to do a light bake anyways so uh spoiler i'm not gonna get this all the way into the play canvas editor here into the web world's sdk to be able to walk around it and test it it's not gonna happen today but uh, it will happen next time. So, um, realizing that I'm not going to get it all the way into the parcel. And remember, this is all one draw call. Everything that I made today in this room over here, this is going to be one draw call. It's going to be spectacular. But let's finish it up. Um, when you drop in here, I want, I'll just throw a banner on the back wall. How's the back wall look? It looks all right. We don't want it to be too shiny. I mean, too, too bright. So let's just roll with this. Let's go for quantity here. I'll be making more rooms later. Um, I think that I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, to compile this, right? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep the backs of the doors on even though I don't technically need them. I expect that I, uh, I'm not going to purge them because this isn't the final state of this room, but I'm going to build this room right now. So let's see how it goes. Um, first things first, save a backup copy. Ooh, it looks like I wasn't naming this thing well. Let's save as. I will name this thing um, First Room. First room max. sure. And then we're ready to do the baking process. All right, y'all, hold on to your butts. First thing is delete everything that I don't need. So I'm going to, um, well, first step was make a backup copy. Then I'm going to save this as first room underscore baked because it's a little destructive what I'm going to do. Um, maybe you'll be okay with the, the amount of destruction that we're about to impose on our thing, but I'm not. So I need to make a backup copy. I need this one a different one now. First room baked. I'm removing everything that I don't need. That includes all of these hidden objects. I'll just delete them. I got all these lights. Okay. And everything else, it looks like it's part of the map. Wonderful. Now I'm going to merge everything into one mesh. So I'm going to call this first room. It doesn't need to be one mesh, but each uh, mesh is one material when you bake in 3ds Max, as I am about to bake in. And I want one material for this entire room. That way, it's one draw, draw call, just like the sample. So I'm just going to go through and merge everything into one mesh. One mesh, one room. This one's called firstroom.mesh.org. Um, oh, I missed some stuff. We also want to attach that one, that one, and that one. Okay, now I have a whole bunch of lights and I have one mesh. And when I click render, uh, everything looks exactly the same. Cool. 
Now. Now is the moment of truth. Let's try different ways to unwrap this. We gotta do the UV unwrap. And most things in this scene could perhaps be very well UV unwrapped. So I'm gonna to try to, to use the UVs that are on them right now. I have no idea what these UVs look like. In fact, I should assign a test texture to see. Let's do that. I have a, text tex a test texture. This is a Unix system, I know this. Over here on the Jedi Archives media library, I have something down here called skin.jpg. Put that in there and assign it over here to the base color and see how horrible our UV maps are right now. That's okay. Um, as long as they are, um, how can I describe this? As long as they are not sh stretched, they're just scaled incorrectly, they're okay because I'm about to do this. I'm about to go and apply a UV unwrap and open the UV editor. And then I'm going to click that I want lots of padding. It's okay to rotate, let's do this. There, it packed everything in. And it was good that I didn't weld the ceiling or the floor because that allowed it to be busted apart on the UV islands. That's wonderful, actually. I need to remember that. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Everything is busted apart. We got my pillars. Let's see, is that enough pillars? Are all my pillars in there? That must be a whole pillar. That can't be right. Yeah. Yeah, these UVs are no good. Okay, because there's no seam on them. So, um, I am going to do something here. I'm feeling like I'm going to automatically flatten these UVs. Yeah, so let me save this. And now I'm going to do something non-ideal. Delete that. And I'll do render. Render texture. Instead of spending the time UV unwrapping. And I, I could you un, un UV unwrap these things. And you should keep UV unwrapping in mind while you're building the model. See how some of the stuff is UV map because I had it in mind for some of it. Uh, anyways, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, on channel one, I am going to UV unwrap this thing. Oops, I forgot to add anything. Where's my auto unwrap? What just happened? Oh, it would use the existing channel. There we go. Unwrap only. Okay, now I auto unwrap this thing. Um, I'm a little worried about seams, but if this works, this will be wonderful. Because look, when I look in the UV islands now, it's a mess. So um, let's go over here and do that. And let's see, it's okay to rotate and do this. Okay, we'll see how this works out here. Um, now we got all that on UV1, and we're going to do our bake. And I'm baking everything into one UV channel, and it's time for me to take off this thing. So I don't need to see the UVs anymore. As you can see, it looks the same when you're not looking at the, the UV grid there. And we're ready for the big fat bake, which might be the last thing I do on the stream, 
depending on how long this takes. Um, render to texture. No, bake texture. Yeah. We're going to bake a beauty map that has everything on it. We'll call it First Room Beauty. Sure, PNG. Um, if you use 3ds Max, I'll go ahead and go explain what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm going to tell it to, after I bake it, create a new material that is a GLTF material and assign it to the emission map of that material. That's it. And then we are good. Um, I'm saving it out to this random folder. That's fine. And it's going to be 2048. The padding. There we go. I need to adjust the padding to 8 because I'm going to apply a blur to this afterwards. I'll do a 4. I'll do a 4, perhaps. Maybe I'll do an 8. Yeah, 8. All right. Let's see how this goes. And if it goes well, it might be the end of the stream for today because we don't want to sit around watching a um, bake process all day. But it might take, might not take long. That would be nice. If it doesn't take long, I might have to make some adjustments to the lights to make it a higher quality bake. And it will take longer in that case because it's always a balance between how long it takes to produce the bake and the quality of the bake in the end. It's, it's kind of like always a balance between that because um, render times are no joke so I'm, I'm seeing there's like um, is what it's called those little whites um, or glowing specks everywhere that's not good I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to denoise this Now I'm not going to worry about the noise at first. The, the main thing I want to do is get this into onto a, onto a GLTF, export the GLTF, and um, make sure my UV unwrap was adequate. Because uh, the, the way that I did the auto unwrap, instead of actually taking the time to UV unwrap my shapes, I did auto unwrap, which is amazing that I, you don't even need to worry about anything. You just click it and it automatically always unwraps. But it adds lots and lots and lots of seams and it, you got to um, make sure that you render out your bake at the resolution that you're going to use it because you don't want to shrink it down after you bake it out because that's going to exaggerate any seam issues that you have. You want to make sure that you have uh, padding when you do your UV spacing on the UV sheet. And you're going to want to make sure that you do padding when you render out the actual image, which is a little bit different. So right now, when you're looking at this image, this is actually not the texture. 3ds Max is pretty misleading in this. It's, it's showing you a preview, but what it's rendering out is not the actual texture. There's actually a big difference. And let me show you what that difference is by some, some other stuff that I baked the other day. When you go over to scene assets, images, okay, here's a bake from the other day. This, that's a bad example. This is the kind of stuff, is this a good example? Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that it renders out. And um, the, uh, the padding is an interesting kind of padding. It's kind of like pixel bleeding, but it does it in a certain way. Let's see if I can find another good example. I don't know if I'll be able to. It does, yeah, you compare that one to this one. Yeah. So this is no padding over here on the left. And here is the exact same UV sheet with padding. And look how different they look, other than the size being so different. <laughs> there, now, the size isn't so distracting. Um, the one on the right, it, what it does is it over-renders. And the reason the over-rendering beyond the UV lines, where the UV cage is laid on the sheet, that's important because when you do uh, MIP maps or you manually scale down the texture, you're going to have anomalies. And if you don't have over render, like if you don't render a few pixels beyond where the actual UV lines are, you're going to have rounding errors from what's called a pixel, which is the amount of space on the screen that one um, pixel of texture space occupies. Think about that for a second. So you got your 1080p screen 
and then you have a 512 texture and it's on the floor on the ground on the floor and it's tiled and it's a certain scale how big is a pixel of that texture taking up on the screen often it's taking up less than one pixel and that's why mip maps and uh, are so important because um you don't want to have more detail in the texture than you can render because then you start getting other kinds of artifacts so um you just got to be aware that like the, the a pixel on a texture is going to be rounded and especially when you start doing mip maps <coughs> and it's adjusting the resolution of the um, image because then you got to do rounding you got to round your uvs to the nearest um pixel or, or blur between the pixels and in either case the effect is if you don't have padding when that kind of blur happens to the nearest pixel you get um, the background color. So the black background color here is black. <coughs> That's not good. Because if there's any pixel bleeding, you're gonna have a jagged black line. But honestly, I mean, you could set a, a, a kind of off-white, kind of like the average color as the background. That works good. But you're not gonna find a perfect thing that's gonna hide seams if seams start popping up. To actually hide the seams, you need to be like this one over here. Whoa, I don't know why that made everything minimize when I was shaking it. It's amazing. Um, you got to be like this one over here. I guess that's like a Windows gesture or something uh, where it over renders. And then when the um, adjustments happen for the UV lines, like where the actual geometry lines up at, it doesn't matter. You see an extra layer of the same pixel is the side effect maybe a couple extra layers but you can't really tell because it's the exact same pixel and the way that they render it out here how it's kind of like a, um it kind of just goes out in all angles it, it works really really well so yeah padding i'm kind of just talking to kill time to try to get through this first render which i'm gonna have to wait for a moment now before it wants to pop back up and show me the preview but I'm rendering this in the background. Here's some other stuff that I rendered the other day. You can tell that I had the padding turned way up here because everything was kind of looks kind of blobby on the edges. Compared to this one, which it doesn't look that I had the padding turned very high up. or where I'm at with this render. Here we go. This could look so awesome. <laughs> I am excited to see how this turns out. But if it doesn't speed up soon, I think that I might kill the stream because there's no point talking to kill time while we wait for this render y'all can just catch up either um, next stream where I'll, I'll be getting it into the environment here or on twitter i'll be posting it Did it, fin it finished Whew. okay let's see how it turned out here it is i have the padding turned on when you combine padding with noise oops you get a weird anomaly. This is why I gotta be sure that there's no noise when I render it, which means I have to go in and change the settings on my light so it takes an hour to render or two hours, but there'll be no noise, which is important because you see how noise affects the padding? It streaks it and that's not good. You do not want streaky noise. I mean, it has to because like I was saying, it just takes that last pixel and bleeds it out, but um, this last pixel was a, a noise anomaly and it bled out the noise anomaly. So denoising is pretty good, like denoising after the fact, but it's no replacement for denoising in the actual render, which is a um, tedious process, which I'm getting better at and I will do off stream. However, let's, uh, I'm gonna show you what this looks like on a model and I got time to do this, no problem. All right, so I rendered this out. Okay, real quick, close here. It automatically assigned it to my model here. I could tell because I can see the anomalies. Now, if I did a quality bake that took an hour, 
I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It would look very much like it does when it's not baked. But here, I can tell that it's baked. So I'm going to go ahead and um, remove all of these lights. No, I'm not going to remove these lights. This thing, I'm just going to export it and see what it looks like. First room.glb with everything baked inside of it. How are you looking? I'll be testing it. Oh, I'm just going to play Canvas Model Viewer. There it is. That worked out well. Now, remember, you got to ignore the, uh, the, the speckles on there because that will be fixed when I do a quality render. What I'm looking for are seams, and I'm seeing seams. I'm seeing seams right there. That's no good. Where else am I seeing seams? Nowhere, really, but I do see them over there. So something over there is um, not UV mapped very well. I wonder what that is. Oh, it's probably something along the edges. So what this thing does, 3ds Max, it adds padding everywhere except for the edges. I don't know why it does that. It doesn't add padding on the edges. Okay. This is a Unix system. I know this. I don't need padding on the edges. I can clamp the, uh, the UVs. So let's go ahead and try it in here. Drag and drop it into here. It's a 2K texture, so it will take a moment to upload and process. Ooh, I forgot to make a folder to store all this stuff. Oops. Okay, now in here, let's go ahead and put the template into the scene. Now I made this scene using inches as my unit of measurement. However, it still looks perfectly to scale when I imported it into the editor. How did that happen? The answer is because 3ds Max puts the unit of measurement into the file. So um, smart applications like uh, Play Canvas here, it knows that um, it needs to use the, the, the scale that's defined, the unit of measurement, and it converts it. So even though I did it in inches, which is insane, it worked out. Now I gotta go over here, turn my defuse to black, okay. Now I, I can really see those lines. How am I gonna fix those lines? Um, that's a good question. I don't know how to clamp UVs here, do I? Let me try Googling this. Interesting. I might have to fix this before export. Telling it not to tile at all doesn't work, and it just seems like it just wants to tile, and I can't tell it not to tile. So I can't clamp the UVs, I need padding. Wah, wah, wah. But other than that, this is looking pretty good. Um, let me make this material. Let me copy some of the attributes from this material. Gray, specular 050. No, that's not being used. Okay, we got bluish color over here. Specular is some other stuff. Okay. 
And then for the collider, I just, I, I'm going to use the same collider. So um, I add that, I add that, I tell this to use a mesh, then I go drag and drop my mesh over here to over there, and I have my collider, and then I just need to make sure that my spawn point is over there. And then I should be able to walk around. And this has no lights in it, and it's very, very collidable. See, everything is collidable. I didn't even have to define that. I just set it up using the render mesh. If you have a super high poly model, you don't want to use the same visual mesh as the collider. Okay, I'm seeing more seams over here, but I'm, I'm wagering that these are more edge of the atlas seams. I'm, I'm thinking that all of the seams that I see are things that are butted up against the edge of the atlas. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to be pressing this button down here. Because you see how this one adds the padding? I'm going to be doing that. that this looks good right there, actually. And that's going to fix my problem of stuff on the... I, I actually just fixed it already, but I want to render this out, the kind of render that takes a long time, so it's the final render. Oh, but there, that's going to fix all of my seams, I believe. Over here, um, I just got to tell this thing that I want to do that. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to re-render this out. Oops. Eight padding, UV ones, 24. Okay, so I'm ready to click bake and I'll be doing that in a moment. But first, I just want to show you all one last look at the thing here. Pretty good. First of many rooms, perhaps. This is the coat room. Um, so uh, I'm hoping after this next bake, the noise is gone. Those little, even though the speckles look pretty cool in some places, I'm hoping there's no speckles. And there's no seams, because I think all those seams were from being on the edge of the atlas. And this room will be perfect. Um, the door isn't dynamic, it's just sitting there like that. But, you know, when there's another room that needs to be connected to it, that's going to change. And that door will become dynamic of some sorts. Or maybe there'll just be a bunch of different areas you teleport around to. I don't know. This looks pretty good. Wish there was more reflections showing on the top there. but. Oh, and one more thing I want to show y'all. Let me turn off this thing. And let me relaunch with the profiler. The point of all that was so the whole room, the whole scene could be one draw call. And we've achieved that, I'm sure. Bam! One draw call. The whole thing. And one draw call. That's right. Two draw calls, three draw calls, but that goes from nothing to the whole whole, whole room in one draw call. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Well, it's technically beautiful. Okay. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm not signing off just yet. I'm gonna be rigging up my lights, then I'm gonna be clicking that button, and then that will be the end of it. Um, it looked like I had mostly Am or um, ambient noise. So let me see here. Can I group select these? I can't. Let's crank all these up from samples. Samples from two to four. Two to four. Two to four. This will help with the direct lighting noise that I had. I need to install 3ds Max 2024. It might have 
improved Arnold renderer support because it's ridiculous that I can't multi-select these things and change this property at the same time for all of them. Okay, and then the other thing I have to do is go into render setup and change my passes here. All right, and now when I click render, it's going to be um, a long wait, the long wait. So I'm going to take a screenshot and post it on um, Twitter. So how about this? I'll take a screenshot of this. Okay. Then I'll take a screenshot of this. How do I do that? And then I can put the material on there. Even though that's not the final bake. This is the bake that I took the screenshots of. Okay. So that'll, that'll do the screenshots. This isn't going to be actually on a parcel until next time. But this is what it's like when you go in here and you click bake. It's going to take longer to get started. It's going to take longer to do the whole deal. But um, hopefully it doesn't take more than a couple hours from me here. And I'll get that on the parcel. Um, so thanks to everybody for tuning in. Once again, I'm SM Sith Lord. This is the weekly build. We were focusing on making hyper-optimized um, baked lighting, baked everything um, environment here, this room, um, so that it renders the entire room in one draw call and still looks amazing. So we've checked both of those boxes after the render is complete. <laughs> we saw the test room though, to know that, it's, that it'll work out. Um, next time, hopefully, well, unless I have something more interesting to be working on, I will be making another room of this sort to attach to this one, or maybe it's just a different location, the same style, but I'm gonna be playing around with this art style for a while whenever I'm doing a free form build. And this art style is, uh, it's solid colors so you can't tell that the bake is low resolution it's really fancy lighting all done in the baking it's lots of curved geometry because of the way that the um the lighting kind of wraps around to the curved stuff and how it, it makes the light bakes look good um and not too detailed keeping it simple that's the theme that we're going for oh cool it started kicking out some pixels on the render here all right everybody Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Peace out.